Hello friends, so recently John Pollard was giving a talk at RailsConf how they built Buzzsprout into a Tubo native app and launched on the App Store. And by looking at the presentation, he had a few slides about the difference between uh, menus on desktop and uh, on mobile devices. So like on desktop, you can have all this kind of uh, uh, menus uh, with lots and lots of items. And on a mo mobile device, you would usually have uh, a bottom menu with, uh, as they say, five items max. So I decided to have a look at how uh, navigation is done on uh, popular websites like Instagram. Here I'm looking at the Instagram web client and uh, you see here we have the sidebar navigation and if I make the screen smaller, like it would be on a mobile device, here I have uh, search in the header and I have uh, the links in the footer. So that it is easier to navigate with your fingers. And uh, if uh, we have a look at, uh, yeah, here I have a couple of screenshots of Revolut and of Instagram, how uh, they look uh, on actual mobile devices. You see we have uh, uh, something like search or list of messages in the header and uh, the actual links in the footer. So how can we build uh, this kind of navigation in our own app? Actually, I already started uh, making a series of videos uh, about uh, how to use Tailwind CSS in Ruby on Rails, and this is going to be another video in uh, this series. So on Super Rails, I already added this kind of uh, uh, bottom navigation. If you're looking uh, at superrails.com from a mobile screen, you will see these links on the bottom, but you will still see search and the link to user profile in the navbar and also the logo. So let's uh, take the application that we started building in this uh, uh, in the Stalvin series, here it is, and add the bottom navigation on a small screen. Now, the application works uh, like this at the moment. We have uh, a nav bar uh, that is sticky, we have a sidebar that is sticky, and we can uh, scroll on the body of the application. And if I make this application uh, window smaller, we don't have the sidebar anymore, but the content from the sidebar is visible in uh, this drop down. I click outside and the drawdown closes. So let's add the footer navigation. I'm going to open this application and I'm going to go to application html.erb. I can do it right here or maybe it would be better to create a separate partial like uh, footer nav. So let's say equals render layouts footer nav. And I'm going to create this uh, file in layouts underscore footer nav.html.erb. And here I'm going to open a nav tag. And uh, let's put something inside like hello. Let's see if it gets displayed. Now it just it gets displayed on the very bottom of the page. So let's make it sticky. I will say class sticky bottom zero. And now you see it is sticky to the bottom all the time. Now let's add some kind of color like background sky uh, 950 so that it is always visible. Let's make it the uh, background, I know, white. Okay, so here we have a basic nav, but we want to style it and maybe we want to have a few links. Let's try adding a few links and centering them correctly. I would uh, not have uh, words. I would just have uh, some kind of uh, icons like Instagram has here in the bottom footer. The icons should uh, basically represent what you want to navigate to. So these are tags, these are uh, videos, these are playlists. Uh, I hope this is clear on the SuperRails website. So uh, we would have uh, maybe a logo as I do here in the middle and we would have a few links and clicking on the logo would take you to the root path. So I already imported a logo and uh, just one uh, SVG. It'll be enough for this example. So let's uh, say equals link uh, to root uh, path do. And, and we will have uh, image tag to uh, what is the name of the SVG plus circle.svg. Let's see if it gets displayed. So here's the plus circle. Let's uh, limit the size. So I would say uh, class uh, width uh, 8 and height 8. Um, maybe we should do this uh, not on the link to but uh, on the image tag itself. Okay, here it is. Let's put a few of these images. Let's say 5. Okay, and now we would want to center them and have them in a row. So I'm going to say that the display is going to be a flex. So now everything is in a row and we are going to justify around. 
So now it is more or less centered. And in the middle, instead of this plus circle, we are going to have uh, the logo. Logo.png. So looks fine. Let's add some padding in the sides and on top. So padding uh, X, so on the left and the right, is going to be, let's say, 6 pixels. Oh, actually, it's not pixels, but uh, yeah, it's 24 pixels. And padding Y is going to be 3. Okay, it looks uh, a bit better. And uh, at the moment, the navbar or the footer is visible always. But we want to make it visible only on the smallest dimension of the screen. So it is going to be flex, but the, the thing that goes after the small screen is MD. So it's going to be hidden on MD screen size. MD hidden. Okay, now let's try making the screen bigger. And you see, on a bigger screen, the footer navigation is hidden. And on a smaller screen, the footer navigation is visible. So that's about it. We have a few links. Of course, you can change the icons to be the ones that you want. You can uh, change the links. But here is the basic principle. We have this uh, footer that is sticky on the bottom. We justify around to have even spacing around the icons and uh, from the sides. And uh, you would not be using any words. You would be using only icons. So yes, that's about it. I uh, hope you enjoyed the episode and you will now be able to build the best looking responsive apps uh, on the web. So see you in the next one.